Hello, Mishpucha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. I am here today with a tag video, and again, I know, it's not Tag Tuesday. I'm late. However, I am behind in my tags, but I was just tagged yesterday by Hannah of Hannah's Books in the A to J book tag, so I thought, you know what? I'm prepared for this one. I'll go ahead and do this one, and hopefully I'll get caught up on the other tags next week, so let's go. So this is the A to J book tag. It was originally created by Jim at Jim's Books Reading and Stuff. And again, I was tagged by Hannah at Hannah's book, so thank you, Hannah, for tagging me. I will link both of their videos down below. Um, so yeah, this is this is A through J, so let's go. A, A is for author. Which author have you read the most books by? So I think the author that I've read the most books from is in fact Toni Morrison, because I've read all 11 of her novels, and I've also read her um, one of her nonfiction books, which is Playing in the Dark, Whiteness, and the Literary Imagination, and I've also read her short story Recitative. So I think of everyone I've read, she's probably the one that I've read the most from. B, B is for Black History Month. What are you reading for Black History Month? So I am currently reading Justin Philip Reed's collection of poetry, The Malevolent Volume, which will come up again in a future answer in this tag. Um, I'm also currently reading Chanello of Parante's Under the Idolatries with Scott and Nell of Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. This is, I'm reading this as an ebook, so I don't have it to hold up. Um, later this month, I will be getting to Lucille Clifton's collection of poetry, Mercy. And I will also be reading Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower with Lindsay of Lindsay's Book Life. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's about everything. Uh, C, what are you currently reading? So in addition to the Read Poetry Collection and Chanel of Peranta, I'm also reading um, David Zucchino's Wilmington's Lie about the 1898 coup for the Booktube Prize. Um, I'm also still buddy reading Moby Dick by Herman Melville with Melissa of Fully Booked. Um, I'm also reading uh, Akwaiki Amezi's The Death of Vivek Oji for Scott and Nell's Red Under the Bed book group. Uh, D, what is your drink of choice while reading? So most of the time I have a water bottle next to me. So gonna go with water, although my favorite um, my favorite time to read is first thing in the morning when I have a nice cup of coffee next to me. Um, so that's that's my favorite thing to do is to get up, take the dog out, turn on the coffee, and then when the coffee gets done, I sit for you know like an hour plus and just I just read with my coffee and it's it's so great. Um, e ebook or physical book. So I prefer physical books, but I've been reading a lot more ebooks since the pandemic because they tend to be easier to get a hold of um, in terms of library access. So, um, and even though the libraries around here are open again, um, again, it's, it's sometimes you just have an, a larger selection of eBooks that you can choose from than physical books in the library sometimes. So yeah, you, um, so yeah, again, I really prefer physical, but I have been reading a lot more eBooks lately. F. Favorite fictional character. So I could not possibly choose just one for this, but I do really love a complex villain. So, but what I mean by this is it can't just be a cartoonishly evil caricature of a villain, right? It can't be like Snidely Whiplash or Simon Legree kind of villain. Um, I also don't really love like a, a villain's tragic backstory, right? Which is like, this is how they became evil. Like they were eventually, they were initially good, but then something happened that flipped a switch in their brain and now they're bad, right? Like, I don't really like that either. I like a complex, intelligent villain who sees what right and wrong actually are, but for whatever reason, usually power, makes the choice to go down the path of evil, whereas most of us choose the path of good instead. <laughs> so characters like, um, say, Sister Leopolda in Louise Erdrich's Love Medicine series, or the character of Roy Cohn in Tony Kushner's Angels in America, and again, the character of Roy Cohn, not the in-real-life one, um, or 
Lord Henry in Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray. These are all examples of what I would call complex, intelligent villains who, again, can see the difference between right and wrong, but have decided to go down the path of wrong instead. Um, and, uh, yeah, so these are people who are objectively bad by all counts, like you can see what they do throughout the course of, of these works, and you're like, yes, this is not a good person who I should emulate, <laughs> right? But they're so fascinating to watch. Um, so my students in gender and literature right now are finishing up the picture of Dorian Gray this week, and my favorite line from Oscar Wilde's novella is from Lord Henry, who says, to get back my youth, I would do anything in the world except take exercise, get up early, or be respectable. Amazing. How could you not love a character who says something like that? <laughs> so, yes. Love a complex villain. G is for Georgia, and this is the Republic of Georgia, not Georgia the state where I live. Um, do you know any famous Georgians? So, not personally, but I do know that that book, The Eighth Life, that's about the, it's like a multi-generational family story about a family with chocolate recipe. Um, I know that's been making the rounds on BookTube lately by Nina Haratishvili, I think, maybe is the author. Um, and she is Georgian, and that book is set in Georgia, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the only one I know off the top of my head. H is for horror. Is there a book that really scared you? So, I recently read a poem in Justin Philip Reed's The Malevolent Volume that showed me something about myself that I didn't like, and now I have to sit with that. So, uh, let me see if I can find that and read. I'm not going to read you the whole poem, but the poem in here is called Leaves of Grass, which is obviously a take on Walt Whitman's uh, volume of the same title. So this is the part that, that particularly uh, got to me. The faithful believed in bombs and not refugees. I slept in a bed and the children in cages. I slept in a bed and the children in cages. The children died in detention. I paid my bills and therefore I perpetrated. I paid taxes to be more effectively terrorized. So yeah, that's pretty horrifying <laughs> when you stop and think about it. Um, okay, I, I don't know, Italy, India, Ireland, intelligent, whatever you like. So for this, I decided to go with India because I feel like Aravinda Diga is an author who is being slept on on book two. <laughs> I don't know why I don't see more people talk about Aravinda Diga. Um, so I've read, so Aravinda Diga has published to date five books, and I've read four of the five of them. I think um, the only one I haven't read is Selection Day because it's about soccer or rugby or some some sport. So, um, but his his. Um, debut novel, The White Tiger, which is excellent, won the Booker Prize in, I want to say, 2008, and then um, he also wrote a collection of short stories called Between the Assassinations. He also wrote this book that I'm holding, Last Man in Tower, um, and he also wrote uh, a book that was published last year called Amnesty, and I thought both The White Tiger and Amnesty were quite good. Um, Last Man in Tower is also good. I wasn't as much of a fan of the short stories, um, but you know, I think I think most writers are either short story writers or novel writers, and it's you know you, you can't you probably can't actually do both equally well. So yeah, Aravinda Diga, get get on it, book two. <laughs> um, and Jay, the last prompt. What book have you just finished? So I have not just finished anything. Uh, this week yet, yeah, but a book that I am just about to finish is Philip Roth's Goodbye Columbus. I have 25 pages left in this, um, so it's probably going to be a race to the finish line between this one and Chinelo of Paranta's Under the Idolatries, because I'm also quite close to the end of that, but I imagine because I only have 25 pages left in this book, I will either finish it up tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. Um, so yes, this has been the a to J book tag. Um, I do want to tag to do this Paula at Draw Your Book and Sandra at Pull Down the Moon. Um, but if you are just watching this tag and you want to do it, please feel free to consider yourself tagged anyway. 
Um, so thank you for watching this. I hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, what do you kill you to call your mother?